the ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bride. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps, but took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the five bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all these virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the wise and the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us to do, but go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, open to us. And he said to them, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Nestled in a grove of trees at the top of a steep hill, there was a shop. And every person who toiled up the path to the top came for the same reason, to buy oil. The shopkeeper was a young man with thick brown hair. His large hands were strong but gentle. He spent much of his time sitting at a wooden workbench, carefully sculpting small oil-burning lamps. It was his tradition to give one of these lamps to every person who moved into the village. Each lamp was meticulously crafted. Some were round, others were oval. Some were made of ordinary clays, and others were made of terracotta. Some were perfectly smooth, and others had intricate designs tooled into their surfaces. But all of them were unique, all of them held oil, and all of them produced light. The shopkeeper carefully sculpted each lab to complement a quality he hoped each woman would develop within herself. With time and effort, each could become a woman of the scriptures. A woman who takes the spirit as her guide. A woman who keeps the commandments. A woman who respects sacred things. A woman of humility. A woman who is loyal. A woman of service. A woman who diligently prepares. A woman of prayer. A woman of grace, personal conversion, and holiness. With her lamp, each woman was given a choice. She could use her gift carelessly, foolishly thinking she had plenty of time to prepare, or she could use her gift at all times and in all things and in all places. The shopkeeper reminded each woman to return to his shop often. The tiny flame the lamp produced could not be maintained without an ongoing supply of oil, and the lamp maker's shop was the only source of oil in the village. But the path to the top of the hill was steep, and the journey took time and effort. Those seeking oil would arrive at the shopmaker's home at all times of the day or night, and each was met with a warm welcome no matter the hour. The shopkeeper's brown eyes would light up as the love brother came through his door, and he always set his work aside to visit. Shopkeeper on the hill, all through the night the light in his window burns as he works the clay, and everyone waits to see 
One of the first women to receive a lab from the shopkeeper was Eliana. I used my lamp to light up the shadow corners of my little home. When evening comes, I sit by a soft glow and read my favorite books. Sometimes when I have finished reading, I take my book, set it by the lamp, wrap a warm blanket around my shoulders, and I watch the flames flicker and dance. My lamp has seen me through the happiness, through joy, my lamp has also given me comfort through disappointment and discouragement. The constant light has guided me through valleys of darkness and has given me the courage that I need. Even though my lamp has been used for many years, the flame shines just as bright as it did on the day it was made. because she was always so rushed and hurried. He watched her run in and out of her house all day long. Half that time, she had to run back because she forgot her shoes. Most of the time, she forgot to take her lamb. He knew of her great responsibility as a teacher, healer, mentor, and caregiver. But he also knew the concerns of her heart. Most days, it is all I can do to get up, to get myself up and get dressed. When the time the sun comes up over the mountain, I get to work. Sometimes I look up at the shop on the hill and think, today will be the day. Between scrubbing the floors and doing the dishes and tending the children and the trip to the market, I will find the time. Try. 
the shopkeeper knew that each of the women used her lamp in her own way. He also knew that those who visited his shop most frequently were those that used their lamps most often. As he was asked to do so, the shopkeeper would refill the lamps with oil, drop by drop, according to each woman's need. Dina was the first to ask the shopkeeper for a vessel to hold more oil. It seemed that the supply of her, of her oil was never enough to keep the flame burning between her frequent visits to the shop. Dina was known throughout the village for her ability to bring comfort at any time of the day or night. I used my lamp to light the way as I traveled to the homes of the villagers during the darkest hours of the night. Because I used my lamp constantly, I worried that I might run out of oil on my journeys through the darkness. And so I asked the shopkeeper to create a vessel so I could carry extra oil for my lamp. My lamp has brightened the rooms of those that are sick and warmed the lives of the lonely. It has accompanied me through moments when I have seen sorrow and at times when I have witnessed grief. the top of the lamp, the shopkeeper gently placed it in the kiln. Nava knew that her lamp was something to be treasured, and she carried it everywhere she went. As I walked home with my new lamp, I watched the flame flicker and knew that this gift was something to be treasured. But keeping the flame lit is a difficult task, and although I keep it with me, Wherever I go, I rarely light my lamp. On special occasions, I sit down at my kitchen table. I pull the wick through the small hole at the top, trim off the blackened portion of the wick, 
and light it. This ensures that my lamp will burn bright and true. As I admire the soft glowing flame, I wonder why I don't light my lamp more often. The shopkeeper watched Gabriella closely for many days before he finally came up with the perfect design for her lamp. She was an unassuming woman and rarely called attention to herself, which made the task more challenging. She was also gentle and wise beyond her years. Her clothing was unadorned and beautiful in its simplicity. She had a natural style and elegance that were all her own. Every day I make my way up the narrow path that leads to the shopkeeper. I'm beginning to realize that spending more time with him will help me to become more like him. He makes me feel welcome every time I visit. It is my hope that those who visit my home find me to be such a loyal friend as he is, one who always speaks with others with respect and admiration. When the shopkeeper asked what I hoped for, I asked him to make my wrap simple. He molded the clay into an oval that fits perfectly in the palm of my hand. With painstaking care, he smoothed away each rough spot and imperfection. My lamp is simple, allowing those who see it to focus on the flame.
if she would ever be married. And the shopkeeper watched her struggle. He had crafted her back with a complicated geometric design, one that would stand out. Still, Audie spent much of her time comparing it to the lamps he had given the others. I feel as though I'm so much less than everyone else in this village. No matter what I do, it's never enough. Sometimes I wonder if my lamp is as nice as the one the shopkeepers gave the others. In some ways it's beautiful, but in other ways it's lacking. I wish I could do more with this gift that I've been given. The shopkeeper knew that Audie would quickly tire of her lamp, so he hid a yellow diamond pattern in the intricate design of the brown clay. With use, the diamond design would eventually show through Uncomprehending. I'm for more. Am I enough? What do others see? As they pass me by, I wonder what they think. If they knew how I really feel inside, how I to change insecurities I hide. Simple and plain, nothing beautiful or grand. But could I be if placed in your hands? Could I be often run into the shop, pulling her windblown hair back into place, her round brown eyes wide with anticipation. I visited the shopkeeper every day and watched as he sat at his wooden workbench moving my lamp. I couldn't wait for the moment for it to be finished. He often told me how much he appreciated my company and enjoyed our conversations. Now that my lamp is finished, my visits to the shop have become fewer and brighter between. The journey up the hill just takes too long. In the morning, I'm too busy, and in the evening, I'm just too tired. But when I'm in desperate need, I do go to him. And each time, the shopkeeper so, seems so happy for my visit. Thank you. 
lamp was hewn from a beautiful piece of soft red sandstone. After the shopkeeper had given her the gift, she looked at it in wonder. She was amazed that the shopkeeper had gone to the effort to make her such a beautiful gift. When the shopkeeper gave me my lamp, I noticed that the design was very unique. It must have taken him hours to shape it to fit it. I thanked him for the gift and put it carefully in my bag. Sometimes I look at this lamp and can't believe how lucky I am. I'm so flattered that the shopkeeper would have taken the time to make me such a beautiful gift. But none of my friends ever uses her lamp. Besides, I know the village so well, I don't need light to guide my way. I can see just fine through the darkness. I rarely light it at all. But my lamp truly is beautiful, so I set it out in my home as a decoration for friends to admire. the shopkeeper gave Leora her lamp. He watched her take the hands of other villagers <coughs> and by its light lead them through the darkness. He noticed that every time her path met another, she would pause, lift her lamp in front of her, and consider her direction. Because it was hard for Leora to see in the darkness, the shopkeeper worried that she might become lost when she came to a fork or a bend in the road. He knew that without enough light, she would not be able to find her way. <laughs> One afternoon, the shopkeeper cut a long branch from, out, from a tree outside his shop, and he fiddled it until it was smooth. Then, he crafted this small cup, just wide enough for my lamp to fit inside, and fastened it to the pole. He must have known I would treasure this unique gift. On the first night after I received it, I lit my lamp and put it, placed it inside the cup. I held my lamp high and hung the entire path. I noticed that the flame grows stronger as the night goes deeper, allowing me to help the worn, the lost, and the weary to find their way back home.
Justin wasn't sure how it had happened. She woke up one morning to find her lamp in broken pieces on the floor. Perhaps it had blown off the table during the fur furious winds that had preceded the storm. She was devastated. I thought my heart had broken. I could barely see through my tears as I picked up the tiny pieces and gently set them on the table. Each time I passed the small pile, I closed my eyes and wondered if the heartache I felt inside would ever go away. After many days, I came to accept what I had known all along. There is only one who can fix the lamp. I gathered up the pieces and started up the hill. It wasn't long before the rain came and the pathway became slippery, and then the downpour came. The wind whipped my hair into my eyes and it became hard to see. When I realized I wasn't going to make it, I cried out for help. In an instant, he was there. The shopkeeper had been walking just below me. He covered me with his warm, heavy cloak, picked me up in his strong, steady arm, and carried me up the hill. After the storm, he sent me down the hill with two gifts my restored lamp and grateful heart. I've walked through sorrow till I could walk no more. I felt the wind of change blow so hard it's chilled me to the core and pain has knocked at my door. But I have never heard like this before.
time, the shopkeeper decided to marry and chose a bride. Each of the ten women received an invitation to attend the wedding, and each was asked to take part in one of the village's most honored customs. On the night of the wedding, these ten chosen women would use their lamps to light the doorway of the home where the wedding would be held. The glow from their lamps would bring honor to the groom as he entered the home for the celebration. It was a great privilege to be given this invitation, one that many women waited a lifetime to receive. The women could barely contain their excitement for the, event, the events that were about to unfold. And finally, the long-awaited day arrived. The ten women made their way through the village of the, and the crowded streets to the entry of the home where the wedding would take place. And the shopkeeper watched from the top of the hill and waited. Finally, the ten chosen women arrived at their final destination. Each found a comfortable place in the alcove of the doorway and settled down to wait. Time passed slowly and growing weary. The women closed their eyes and slept. The eleventh hour came and went. The entire village grew quiet under the soft glow of the moon. And still, the shopkeeper watched from the top of the hill and waited. patiently waited and watched, raised a cry. The silence was broken. The women awoke with a start. The moment was at hand. It was time to trim their lamps. Suddenly alert, Jessa quickly used her extra oil to fill her darkened lamp. A lifetime of waiting had come to an end, and she hoped she had made sufficient preparation. Gabriella reached for her vessel and filled her simple lamp with all of the remaining oil she had. As she carefully tucked her empty vessel away, Nava, who was sitting beside her, let out a small cry. Her flame had gone out. Her lamp was empty. She had not brought any extra oil. What would she do now? I have waited for this day for as long as I can remember. I desperately want to be a part of this wedding. My preparations just weren't enough. Why didn't I think to bring extra oil? The thought never crossed my mind. Frantic, Nova turned to Gabriella to see if there was any extra oil, but there was none to spare. She watched the other women trim their lamps as tears ran down her cheeks and <coughs> fell on the empty flowered lamp that was cradled in the folds of her dress. Realizing her mistake, Nova fell to the ground weeping. With the bridegroom approaching, the preparations around her intensified, and soon other women in the group realized that they were also short of oil. I had been so consumed with the daily necessities of life, I kept putting off the trip to the top of the hill. I just simply ran out of time. I haven't talked to the shopkeeper in quite a while. I'd waited for his stay for such a long time, but I didn't expect that he would arrive so late in the evening. I didn't prepare for the delay. I wondered if there would really be a wedding. I considered 
to buy a beautiful new dress for the wedding. I wanted to look as nice as the others. I had no money left to buy oil. The five women rushed over to Dina and Leora, who fell at their feet, begging for help. These women had brightened the darkness for them in the past. Surely they would share their oil. But what had been prepared could not be shared in an instant. Every drop was needed now. As much as they longed to help their friends, there was nothing they could do. Finally, weeping tears of frustration, the five foolish women turned to Eliana. The wise woman could give them nothing but advice. Go into the darkness of night and get some oil. Buy what you need and return. Hurry, he is coming. Clutching their empty lamps, the frantic women ran out through the garden gate and into the village streets. They would never make it back in time. The five remaining women carefully trimmed their wicks and finished emptying the oil from their vessels into their lamps. The bridegroom made his way through the crowded streets. He turned the corner just in time to see the foolish women running toward the hill. His heart ached for their lack of preparation. Then. He lifted his eyes to the doorway and took in the sight he had waited a lifetime to see. Leora was there with her finely crafted pole holding her lamp high. The fame flame from Gabriella's simple lamp lit up her eyes which glistened with anticipation. Dina lifted her lamp so the flame could dance with the others, adding a soft glow to the brilliant display of light. Eliana rested a wrinkled hand on Dina's arm and lifted her yellow lamp as high as her frail arm could reach. And quiet Jessa had her lamp cupped carefully in both hands, while tears of overwhelming gratitude streamed down her cheeks. These five wise women had each come to know the bridegroom, and their hearts filled with joy as they watched him stride through the garden gate and down the pathway that led to the great wooden door. The shopkeeper paused and greeted each of the women one by one. Then he invited them in for the wedding feast. Together, the five women raised their lamps in a final tribute and went in with him to the marriage. And the great wooden door was shut. He lifted me and strengthened me. He believed in me and encouraged me. When I was weak, he made me strong. When I thought I could not go on, he made up the difference. When I found disappointment, he offered consoling peace. And at that day, when I shall come in my glory, shall the parable be fulfilled which I spake concerning the ten virgins. For they that are wise, and have taken, received the truth, and have taken the Holy Spirit for their guide, and have not been deceived, verily I say unto you, they shall not be come down and cast into the fire, but shall abide the day. For the Lord shall be in their midst, and his glory shall be upon them. Dancing 